Well, I get the impression that the Sato is all about two people, about two founders, which is uh, David Lancashire and uh, Richard Paris. So let's talk about both of these. As for David Lancashire, uh, he has an extensive experience being a founder because he founded Language Systems Limited as far in the past as July 2008. Uh, as he says about himself, he also did a little bit of the programming there. He even says that he handled all the programming as a sole founder, administrative and content development work, and even he was doing a little bit of the hiring and business development. So a little bit of the everything, which means that he's a geek. Uh, that's not generally what you want to see from a CEO. I know that he officially isn't CEO, but to be honest, it's not even clear that who is actually CEO in Sado, whether it's David or Richard or both of them together. As for Richard, he is a founder of Paris da Costa, which is apparently a, a Swiss watch brand. And he has extensive experience being a CTO uh, in Edan's group. And it looks like Beijing is the city where actually Richard and David met. So that's, I think that's pretty interesting. Important thing to say is that none of these guys have uh, direct experience of finding or funding a $1 billion dollar business. What I like about David and Richard is that they openly call out uh, the problems in a blockchain space. Individuals are responding to their individual interests and not their group interests. That's what's happening in the economic uh, tragedy of the commons. Now, in blockchain, we're going to see the exact same problem, but we see it with miners putting data onto a blockchain. Their individual incentive is to make the money today, even though it hurts the community, it increases costs, it makes the blockchain unsustainable over time. They are building Sato from the ground up, including community, on the ideas that solve these problems. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about these problems and about how Sato is solving them in the white paper section, but I will definitely mention now Infura problem. For those of you who are unaware what Infura is, Infura is very centralized API. It's very convenient for the dApps to run through Infura. And that's why majority of the dApps run through Infura. So uh, I give a huge thumb up to Richard and David for calling this out. Technical people have come along and they'll say, well, you look, miners are going to pay for the blockchain and they'll pay for the peer-to-peer -peer network or they, or they won't get paid or stakers in Ethereum will provide light client support or they won't get paid. And repeatedly, these people have just been empirically wrong and horribly empirically wrong to the point that in, uh, in Fuhrer last we heard, it was the vast, vast majority of money is collected by one company. And I give huge thumb down to anybody who says Bitcoin and Ethereum um, are two massively decentralized protocols. Besides, we've already seen that this is a problem in November 2020, when Infura was launched to other versions of Ethereum client and ran into the consensus bug. And big exchanges like Binance even uh, suspended ERC20 uh, withdrawals at that time. So we've already seen that this is a big problem, but still too little people are talking about it. Uh, one of the reasons why is that Joe Lubin, he actually owns majority of the blockchain uh, news portals. Next time when you're reading the news, think about who owns the text that you're reading.